This is my first version of a sound syncing tutorial. Here I've got my uh, media that I've captured and it's all in shoot days right here. And inside of day one, you can see I've got camera reels one, two, three, and then I've got sound. And there's the sound and what the takes look like. This happens to be from a black magic. So I'm going to take all those things and put them in a Resolve project. So here you can see I have footage and then same thing, day one, sound, etc., day two, sound. And that's pretty much my bin structure. Now I'm going to show you what I ended up with. This is the British logging system. So clip from scene 13, it is slate one because I'm sorting on date created here. So scene 13, slate one. So the first setup. Take one, two, three, four. Scene 18, which was set up to take one. And here you can see in the sound, they logged sound on set. So I could see slate one, slate two, slate three, etc. Take one, take two. So I had a little bit of an advantage here because the sound mixer input at least the slate and the take. He didn't input the scene, so I had to do that by hand by reading the slates. And you can see that the clip name is that, but the actual file name, you know, is something nasty. And the way I got the clip name to be there, if I click on this, you will see clip name is scene-shot-take. And so Resolve is actually pulling out of the metadata. And if we look at that right here, we can see shot one, which I'm using as the British version of slate. Scene 13, which I ended by entered by hand. Take one. So shot one and take one came from the sound mixer. And actually when it came in, it said scene one, take one, because the BWF format doesn't actually have a field called slate. And so I had to use a spreadsheet to reorganize. So I basically moved the scene field to the shot field so that the scene became blank, the shot was filled in with a slate, and then I could put the scene as appropriate. And so the name of the clip right here is actually coming from filling out this field. Scene 13, shot one, take one. And then the synced audio, well, let's go take a look this, by the way, is a smart bin, which I will show you what it looks like. So this is the picture smart bin that I have. And you can say I've called it picture and I've said match any of media pool properties as of clip type as video or clip type as video plus audio. And then I have a sound smart bin that is just clip type as audio. And then I have an offline, which I don't have any, but that's handy. Status is offline. And then all, and that is clip name is blank or clip name is not blank. There's many ways you could do that. That's just what I chose. So let's go to the sound. Well, these names are kind of dubious. I just left them the way they were. And let's change that because clearly as a general rule that most of them don't have a scene. And then these are just their file names. This one, if I look, you can see it's just set to the file name. Let's just take all of these and go to clip attributes, which I set to command nine because that's what it was in Final Cut Pro 7. Go over to name and I'm going to change it from scene shot take to the file name. So percent that brings up what uh, my fields are and then my file name. So I'm just going to make the clip name the file name. And now we see that the clip names are all just whatever the mixer decided to call it. But like I said, these are all already sunk. Clip 13-0-1 is sunk to slate one take one. Before we undo that, let's take a look at one. I'm going to go to command nine to see my properties, but instead of going to name, I'm going to go to audio. And what we see is that I have 
one adaptive nine track, and that contains the channels one and two, which are the stereo mix from the sound recordist, but they also could contain any of these other things, which in here are the embedded audio from the camera scratch and the boom and these two actors. This is what it looks like after I edited it, but let's go and pull this file in. I'm gonna delete him. Boop. Delete selected clip, yes. And then I'm gonna go over to my files here. Uh, we know it was day one, because and it was the first take, right? So I'm going to take this sound file here and drag him into the bin. Oh, that's not working because this is picture, uh, because this is a smart bin. I can't drag anything from the file system into the smart bin, so I'm going to go to footage, day one, going to go to sound, sorting by date created, and we see this, scene one, take one, for the audio. And again, if I go to command nine to see, this is how this originally looked. So this is the clip as imported straight from the file system. And let's double check that. I'm going to delete this clip and then I'm going to go to the file system and grab it from day one sound, drag it in. And as we can see, here's what it looked like from the file system. Now, as I mentioned, here it says scene S001. I don't want that. I want that in the shot field. And so what I did to get it in the shot field is I went to File, Export Metadata From. I'm going to just take the selected media pool clips right now, and I only have the one selected. So it's going to go somewhere. Downloads metadata.csv. Well, I would really name it something like, in this case, since the project is called Resolve Sync Workflow Example, I'll say Resolve sync workflow example original metadata and so there that's in a csv file now and now i'm going to go over here go to my downloads and there it is go to my browser and i'm going to go to sheets.google.com And then I'm going to import by upload this sheet. And I'm going to replace and convert. And this is what we'll get. Now I only imported one file, so here's what we get. And what I was saying I wanted to do is change the scene here to be shot. So I'm gonna type shot up here. And for me, I wanna get rid of the S on the front. I would really do that as a global replace, but since it's just one, I'm just gonna do that. So now I have moved the scene to the shot. I'm gonna add a new column and call it scene. And that's it. So there is no longer a scene and there is a shot. Now I'm going to export this, take this name that I had there, and name this sheet Resolve Sync Workflow Example Process Metadata and export it as a CSV as it was originally. And now we can see that we have a new file in the downloads. This is the processed one. So I'm going to go to Resolve, File, Import Metadata to, and I could do either Media Pool or Selected Media Clips, and pick this thing, say Open, and the defaults, Entries in the Source File, or Fields Available in the Source File. I think entries in the source file. So I added the shot and it was blank, uh, the scene and it was blank. And that's important because that's going to clear out 
the scene field. If I didn't, I'd have a duplicate. I'd have the, the slate listed in two places, but we don't want that. And now let's say, update all metadata fields available in the source file. And since I did that, it cleared the scene out. So now we've got what we wanted. Shot one, take one. The padding, I'm not worried about the padding, the zero zeros. And I'm going to open up the clip attributes for me, command nine, and we can see that we have a bunch of, in this case, five uh, mono channels, which if I were to just drop them on the edit timeline, they would become five mono tracks. In fact, let's just try that to see it. So there we see all those mono tracks, which were a pain in the butt to edit. So let's go back here to the media page. We don't have to do it in the media page, but I'm going to. And instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this first guy to an adaptive five. And then I'm going to just delete these other channels. And we'll see it filled in for me, handily, the five channels that are available. And I'm going to say OK. Now let's go back over to the timeline and drag that same clip in. What do we get? We get only one. Great. Let's play it. It's working. And curiously, I guess because it was the first clip I dropped, it changed the audio track type from mono to adaptive five. Normally, you might have to right click on that and then say change track type to adaptive and then however many channels, five. But now we have the lovely situation of being able to play all the tracks at once. Or if we wanted to, we could do command nine here and we could mute everything but the stereo mix. And we would be editing with what it was that the field mixer thought was the best guess. OK, so that's the bulk of the trick. Now let's go back here and sync. So I'm going to sync take one with. Actually, this is a funny place because if I I want to select that, but then I want to go over here to select the picture. But now I can't see the sound any longer. So that's kind of a pain. So what do I do? Well, in the media page, I can click on that folder and the sound to select both of these. And now I have all the picture and all the sound. They're sorted on date created, which if the field mixer had set its clock correctly or the camera, I don't know who did it wrong then these things would all be nicely interleaved. Now, unfortunately, they're not. Slate one, take two. So for some reason, we don't even have the picture for slate one, take one. So I'm going to go back down here. And instead of using my slate one, take one audio, I'm going to use my slate one, take two audio. And I'm going to command nine and change this. And in reality, what I would do is I'd select a group of clips. Let's just do that here. Take all the sound clips like that. Command 9, and we can see here that we have those mono, etc. For my case, I'm going to use Adaptive 9 and delete, delete, delete the other tracks and mute the channels I don't want. And I'm just going to get the stereo mix. I'm going to say OK. And then let's just take a look and see if that really worked. We just grab a clip in the middle at random, command nine. Sure enough. Great. So let's go back up to the top here. I'm going to take this video clip and it's very important. It starts the, we have to show the audio. So here's the audio. And then I have to switch to waveform. This is a rather odd interface they came up with to sync clips, but you do that. And then you click on the sound and rather than replacing the clip you're looking at, it now loads into what is a second viewer, essentially, the audio. 
And we can do one of two things. We could sync these by hand, which would be... Yes. Yeah, slate one, take two. Mark it. Okay, so I'm going to go back. And I see it slowed down right there. So that's probably the place where the sound was made. I could go here. It's only one frame difference. I think that's more accurate. So I'm going to go there and then over here. Okay. I'm going to move to here. I wish you could drag this again around, but you can't. So you drag this little box up here to get close and then play or drag this little guy down here to there. And then I'm going to hit the link button. Link. And now if we scroll back up here to the picture, what do we see? Well, we see synced audio right here. So that's new. And we see the clip name, which says 001-2. Why is it missing the scene? As I mentioned, the audio, the field mixer put in the audio, the slate and the take, but he didn't have anywhere to put the scene. So I have to go in by hand for each take and go over here and say scene. Look at this, it says scene 13. So I'm gonna type 13. And now we see 13-01 take two. So we did it here. And now the question is, if we take this thing and go over to the timeline, what do we get? So I'm gonna get rid of this, go to the beginning grab the thing that we just synced, drop it down, and we see picture and audio. And if we play it, okay. there it is. Yeah, slate one, take two. Okay. okay, go over here and listen. Ready. Why are we doing this? We need to create an accurate record. Just. Okay, we're hearing the real sound, but let's just for kicks go over here and do a command nine and change from the linked audio to, let's say, the boom and get rid of that. So we'll just have the boom on one on the left channel. Play it. Accurate record. Just. So that's what the boom sounds like. And then command nine, I'll change that from the boom to Maggie. We'll hear what her love sounds like. We need to create an accurate record. So you can see how this is working beautifully. And I only have one track that I have to deal with in the timeline. Voila. Now, the one other thing that I should show you is, let's say it's time to send this audio off for post. Well, we go to Fairlight and we can see a bunch of audio channels. Uh, most of them are muted, but we can change that. Command 9. And we can go back to giving the audio post house the field mixer's intent. And then, boom. And we can put them in any order that they want. This order that the field mixer created is probably just fine. So there it is. We say OK. And then we see the waveforms appear. We might be able to export this to Pro Tools. I'm not certain. But what I do know is that you can go to Audio 1, the track header, and then say Convert to Linked Group. And that will explode this all out into mono channels, just like we had originally. So this should be perfectly good now to be exported to Pro Tools. So that's the tutorial. I hope it's helpful.